Hi, I'm Molly. And I'm Jamie, and this is our From the Pasture with Hired Hand podcast. As the owners of Hired Hand website software, we've been developing websites and creating internet marketing strategies for livestock breeders for the past 10 years. The majority of our customers are involved in the breeding of registered animals, such as Texas Longhorns, Highland Cattle, Horses, and White-tailed Deer, where the pedigrees are very important. The From the Pasture with Hired Hand podcast examines many of the differences in raising pedigreed livestock for maximum profit. Join us and learn what we're covering today. So today I'm here with Jack and Melissa Thornton with Meadow Creek Ranch, and they are located in Reed City, Michigan. So thank you both for joining us. Thank you. What's the weather like in Michigan today as we record this mid-February? It's actually extremely warm for mid-February. I think uh, I think the high today might have been mid-30s, okay. and uh, but we still got nice 20-mile-per-hour winds. <laughs> <laughs> of course. It wouldn't be Michigan without the wind, right? Yep. <laughs> yeah. So we're, with Hired Hand, we're located in Iowa, so it's pretty nice here today as well, and I know when it gets anywhere right above freezing, it seems like everyone's out in their t-shirts or their shorts, you know, who needs a coat when it's 30s instead of 30 below, right? Is, is exactly. that what it's like there as well? Yep, same same thing. That's, uh, that's why we were working on fence today. Nice. <laughs> well, thanks for taking a break to join us. That means a lot. So why don't you start by telling us a little bit about yourself and um, maybe and how you came up with your ranch name? Um, so we are primarily beef farmers. Uh, we run about 500 acres or so on our own farm and ranch. Um, and there's a creek going through the ranch. So we just kind of named the creek Meadow Creek and came up with the name Meadow Creek Ranch. Nice. And is it just the two of you? Um, it is now. Yeah. Or it isn't now, I should say. <laughs> so now we've got other people working on the farm. Okay. Nice. Well, we are on for, for most of the listeners, though, you know, they, they won't be watching the video we're recording here as well. So this is kind of a tricky question over uh, just the, the audio, but go ahead and try to explain your brand to us, uh, detail what it looks like, and then we'll talk a little bit about how you came up with the idea. Um, so the brand is uh, capital M with a capital C at the bottom right hand corner. So that's pretty much an M and a C. So it's pretty, pretty simple. So you went with Meadow Creek Ranch and MC for your brand then? Yep. Perfect. Um, so I know we talked a little bit um, prior to starting the recording. Um, I had a question about a name listed on your website. Uh, but as, aside from the two of you, is it a family affair? Does everyone kind of play a different role? Um, right now, it has evolved to I own the farm and the ranch. Um, Melissa, she helps out with a lot of the animals, a lot of the care for the animals. Um, we've hired a full-time employee, uh, Nate. He does a lot of different things around the place. And since then, we've hired uh, my father part-time. He does a lot of working on equipment and fence and buildings. And uh, and then now my mother, she does some work with the beef sales and helps with the website and things like that. So it, it has turned into a family affair. <laughs> That's awesome. Is it, Does that ever cause any drama or does everyone fill their role pretty well? Everybody does pretty good, um, but we were pretty clear on, you know, if you want to work here, this, this, it's work. So <laughs> it is what it is. Um, so it, it works out pretty well, though. Everybody gets along pretty good. That's good. Do you two specifically? Do you draw draw straws for those really cold days on who has to go outside, or or no? Do you not mind it if it involves the animals? <laughs> Um, yeah, I get stuck outside a lot more than I want to be. <laughs> so I guess we can just maybe leave it at that. <laughs> but Melissa does help a lot. So yesterday, actually, I think it was three days ago, we had a cattle drive. So a lot of neighbors and other people came to help run cattle down the roads. So everybody gets their fair share. Nice. 
I bet that was a traffic stopper for sure. Yeah, we picked slow mornings with no vehicles on the roads helps a lot. Okay. And you do a lot of that on horseback, I think I saw on your social media. Yep, most of it is. That's so a couple cool. guys walk, which helps too. Very cool. So obviously being in Michigan, you know, you're not in the, the heart of Longhorn country. Uh, talk to us a little bit about why you decided to go with Longhorn. Um, well, when I was quite young, I didn't really know anything about cattle, really. And uh, I kind of just thought they were neat. And I wanted a couple cows. So I just went with Longhorns. Um, but now I guess there's there's different reasons why I have Longhorns. What do you feel like appealed to you? Like what made you follow your gut and purchase those first few? Was it their, their visual appeal or their temperament? Was it their beef uh, quality? So most of it at first was a visual appeal. Uh, and then I learned more and more about their beef quality. And now that that's a large reason why we have quite a few of them. How many head are you all up to? Uh, we're pretty close to 200 right now. Okay. And are some of those earmarked just for your beef program? Yes, they are. Okay. They, we do have some that are unregistered uh, and they're specifically for beef. Okay. So um, let's talk about a little bit about the longhorns that aren't, aren't necessarily earmarked for the beef portion. Um, what's your favorite part now that you have so many? I like the beef. <laughs> no. they're really pretty i think the colors the different temperaments are different it seems like from cow to cow um you never get tired of them and they're, they keep multiplying <laughs> they're they're a very beautiful animal but we have a lot of coyotes and stuff and they're they're excellent brood cows excellent mothers excellent Milkers, they're they're great for for a cow. Very protective. And so then in regards to the beef, I know you mentioned tacos. <laughs> uh, what what else do you like in regards to that aspect? I like the flavor and the health aspect of it. Um, a lot less greasy. Um, and I'm finding out a lot more recipes, so that's been exciting. I've only been introduced to Longhorns for the last couple of years with him. Other than that, I haven't had it before, so I'm really enjoying it now. What's your favorite recipe? I love spaghetti, which is kind of easy for anything, but um, he likes more nachos and tacos. So those are probably the top two recipes. Okay. We had a lot of longhorn beef growing up, and I would have to say my favorite was probably tacos, too. I, I think maybe it's because you can, like, customize them to what you like a little bit more than spaghetti. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. So tell us a little bit about how you got started. Uh, who did you buy those first few longhorns from when you were younger? How did you find them? Why did you buy the ones that you did? Um... So the first ones I bought were from H&B Longhorns in Door, Michigan. Um, really, it's, it's been a few years ago. So I, I am a first generation farmer. So did not have a whole lot of money. So I pretty much purchased what I could afford. Um, but kind of went for a little bit bigger bodied animal because I was growing them for beef. So that's kind of how I got started there. So we ask everyone this question. It's kind of a new one we added this year. Um, what is the funniest Longhorn story you can tell us to date? Um, Feel free to embarrass him, Melissa. You should take this one. I'm sure you have lots of, lots of good stories. <laughs> yeah, do you have one? Um, I guess my funniest was when one of our cows tried to protect one of her calves and kind of picked up the butt end of my horse to push us away. And that was exciting. It wasn't really funny, but it was. That's a good I guess one. my story would be similar as I was checking on calves and 
uh, the bull get, came up too close to the calves and the, the bull is a really good animal. So I was going to walk up to him and pull him away. And uh, out of the corner of my eye came the mother cow and <laughs> found out that I can barely run faster than her because I could feel her on my backside. Oh, wow. <laughs> but I made it. Did you have a bucket or anything to kind of wave her off or was it just a, a full on sprint? It was a full on run and <laughs> the dogs heard me. So they came running and I, I'm pretty lucky I had the dogs with me. <laughs> wow. Do you still have her? I do. Yes. So she so was, couldn't have been too bad then if she's still around, right? Yeah, it was, it was pretty good. She was just being a good mother. I was being not paying attention. <laughs> it's easy to do. I would imagine with as many head as you have to your, your pasture size, it's probably hard to keep an eye on everyone for sure. Yeah, it can be, especially with the short hills that we have, you know, it's pretty hard to see even a five acre field. Mm -hmm. So talk to us a little bit about your goals and dreams for the future of your breeding program. What does the next year look like? Um, the next year we're, we're growing. Uh, we're just trying to expand on the number of animals that we have. Uh, every year we improve on genetics as much as we can. That's That's been a big one. So... I think in the future, we would like to be able to sell more beef uh, locally instead of on a broader, you know, commercial scale. Mm -hmm. So when you're working to improve your genetics, are you striving strictly for better beef genetics? Or are you also, um, do you also have some of your longhorns set aside to compete in the futurities or, or in the horn measurement regard? So the way that we feel about the Texas Longhorn Associations is that they are really good at keeping the longhorn traits uh, the way they should be other than other different beef industries. So as far as futurities go, a, a good futurity winner would be a great brood cow for us for a beef market. Um, that way, as we're breeding them, we, we get what we want out of that brood cow. She's kind of going to stay as the, uh, maybe the futurity side of things. But if we get something we don't like, then that one goes to the beef. <laughs> so the genetics for our beef program and, and what goes to futurities are kind of hand in hand with bone structure and feet structure and things like that. That makes sense. Do you have anything to add, Melissa? Um, I, I always wanted to try to replicate like the kind of the moms that we have now, just kind of keep their attitudes going, but it's hard because they're all so different and there's so many to choose from. You just spend hours just looking through, trying to pick perfect pairings and stuff. So I try to pick ones that are cool and that I like and go from there. What if we look out to the next five years? Do any of those goals um, become bigger or change? Um, I, I would like to get into some more shows and selling higher quality cows. Um, that, that would be probably something I would like to see in five years when I maybe have a little bit more time to spend the time on the road and go enjoy those activities are you hoping to like does it interest you to travel all over the united states with the cattle or are you hoping to kind of stay in the midwest or you know um the northern part of the country um just at local events i actually prefer to be down south so <laughs> <laughs> i don't mind traveling anywhere south of here <laughs> so yeah I, I do like to travel and I, I would love to travel more often with with the animals. Same for you, Melissa. I I like to travel too, so I I would say obviously it'd be nicer to be local, but it would be nice to travel to see some sites and maybe visit some more Longhorn places on the way. Mm -hmm. Pick some up. I mean, there are a lot of strong events in your part of the country, especially within the past few years. They've really you know tried to grow and and focus. So that's you know a lot of people I think 
think of Michigan and that there must not be anyone else there that breeds them or, you know, no events. And that's definitely not the case. Mm -hmm. So if you could go back in time and change one thing about when you were getting started with Longhorns, what would it be? Did you hear? I... What What would you start if you could change one thing? Oh, if I, if I could change one. Sorry, the volume got really quiet on me there. I couldn't hardly hear you. Um, if I could change one thing, I probably would have paid more attention to some genetics uh, instead of purchasing, you know, five head of cattle, maybe, maybe should have purchased three of them that were a little bit better to start with. Love what you're hearing? Be sure to check out our pickup truck confessions. It's a video series where we hop in the truck or a rental car and interview a variety of breeders about what drives their passion for their livestock, how they got started in the breed of their choice, marketing tips, and more. And now back to the podcast. So let's switch gears and talk a little bit about your own animal specifically. And if you each want to take a turn answering a few of these, um, I would imagine that your your answers will be a little bit different. So um, who is your all-time favorite in your own pasture? My all-time favorite in my own pasture. Um, well, if we both get to answer, that helps because we get two different ones. There you go. <laughs> Um, I would have to say right now, uh, SDR Concealed Smooth. I, I really like her. That, that would probably you, be my favorite. What do you like about her? Um, she's, she's got a really good body. She always raises a super good calf. Um, she passes on a lot of good traits, a lot of, a lot of good horn traits, come out of her as well what's yours melissa mine would probably have to be her name is mc hydroshine she's just a sweetheart and her mom is a sweetheart and i don't know why she's always just been the cutest to me so that's my favorite so let's expand it a little bit and now we can talk about just any any cow in the industry um, so who, and alive or dead, it doesn't matter. Um, who would you say is your all-time favorite Longhorn cow? That one's pretty tough. <laughs> I would, I would have to say, I think Classy Maya would, would be my favorite one. And what's your, what's your reasoning for that answer? Um, she's, she's got a nice, good body great looking animal and has some really good looking horns and uh she's passed on some i think some pretty good traits have come out of her do you happen to remember um who bred her or who her um recent owner was uh her recent owner is mark hubble i, I believe that uh, it was jh classy maya Your turn, Melissa. Um, I think that one's pretty tough for me. I'm kind of new to them, so I don't have a lot of the names going around in my head, but um, I, I like her as well and her offspring. Do you have a favorite like type of cow that you like, um, like brindle or, you know, roan or twisty horn or straight horn? Hmm. I used to really like the solid brindles, um, but I'm starting to like some of the more solid red colors more, um, but they're all just really pretty. So what if I asked about your all-time favorite longhorn bull, what would your answer be? Um, mine would have to be, it was Hubble's uh, Bullistic was his name uh, we actually we had him here and he was he was a phenomenal bull and and his growth was phenomenal as well well sadly he uh he slipped down a hill uh, when we had an ice storm and broke his neck so he he was only three years old but he was he was a phenomenal bull 
That's sad. It's, I mean, you're, you're thankful you had him while you did, but sad, sad that he, that that happened. Yes. Is there a longhorn breeder that you kind of aspire to have a program like, or, or really look up to that in your opinion raises like your ideal longhorn cow or bull? Hmm. Do you have a good answer for that one? I like Dickinson Cattle Company. He um, seems to have a lot of knowledge and history behind the breed. And we've gone there and got to see a lot of the different types of animals he has. And they've all been pretty, pretty impressive as far as the size and the health and things that he looks for. Um, good udders, good moms, stuff that's important to keep animals producing. So, yeah. Are you going to steal her answer, Jack? Do you agree? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I will have to say that I agree that I, I think Dickinson does an excellent job at researching genetics and pairing the right animals up. I, I can agree with that. So if I put you on the spot and ask you to pick your favorite Daryl Dickinson bred animal, do you have, does anyone pop to mind? Um... So he's got a cow that I really liked, <laughs> and uh, but he wouldn't let me take her home. <laughs> <laughs> I I uh, I like Dragon Pearl. Good choice. She's very very pretty. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I actually didn't even know that was her in person there, and 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 then he told me who it was, and I thought, oh yeah, I I guess it is, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Is there anyone special that you um, want to give a shout out to for helping you get started or maybe just helping you along the way as you've grown as a breeding program? Um, am I allowed to maybe say two of them? Oh, you should probably whisper one to her quick. <laughs> okay. That might I'm, just, I'm right. just kidding. I'm just kidding. Go for it. <laughs> um, I, I would like to thank uh, H&B Longhorns because they've they've helped me with a lot. Um, Harv has given me a lot of information to get started and has always, he's always welcomed me over to his place and, and we talk quite often. So, so Harv and Josh have a nice operation over there. And what about the second one? Um, did you want to, or am I allowed uh, to? You know him better. <laughs> um, also uh, Hubble's Texas Longhorns. So Mark Hubble has been a lot of help as well. How far are each of those breeders from you? Is it a short road trip or is it a little bit longer? Oh, uh, it's pretty short. I think they're a couple hours from us south. Everything great is further south. <laughs> <laughs> Do you, did you have anyone different that you wanted to bring up, Melissa? Um, widespread Ranch. Um, I've gotten a lot of knowledge from him and um, just, I ask some probably weird questions that other people don't ask. So he's put up with me and my weird questions. So that's been nice. So is there anything else about your breeding program specifically you'd like to share before we switch gears and talk a little bit more about websites and social media? Um. Just that we're striving to keep good genetics in the longhorn breeds, trying to keep them like they're supposed to be and long lived and, and good breeding animals. So. All right. So now we're going to switch gears and talk a little bit about websites. So, again, this is a question that each of you can answer if you want. Um, but what would you say is the average amount of time you spend looking at longhorn websites in a week? That's a tough one, I guess. Um, for me, I don't know if it's a whole lot. I generally generally call somebody for the most part, and then I quick jump to the website to look at some statistical information. So for me, it would probably be a rather short period, like maybe 30 minutes or so a day. Or, okay. I'm sorry, a week. <laughs> 
Okay. What about you, Melissa? Uh, mine varies probably um, probably about an hour a week, depending on um, the weather, I guess, if, it's, if I'm bored. I'll sort of picture. Um, if it's nice out, I won't spend as much time, but probably about an hour a week. When you're looking at your fellow breeders sites, is there anything that ca kind of catches your attention and draws you in that you feel like maybe, you know, you spend more time on a site because of it? Yeah, I, I would say a lot of the breeders are doing a really good job at updating everything on their site and keeping it well updated. So uh, I'll, mm -hmm. I'll look through cow after cow after cow and think, okay, you got to get back to work now. <laughs> <laughs> so what would you say the last three Longhorns or Longhorn sites were if we looked at your search history? Mine would be Dickinson Cattle, Hubble Longhorns, and Widespread Ranch. Um, let's see here. Um, do you have a favorite hired hand website aside from your own? I like Hubble Longhorns, Fritz Longhorns, and the Arrowhead Cattle Company. They seem okay. to have nice pictures that draw me in. So how long has your hired hand website been live? I think it's probably been about three or four years. And go ahead and share your URL with the listeners. Uh, it's meadowcreekranchco.com. Um, so if you had to describe your own hired hand website in only three words, uh, what would it be? What would they be? Um, let's see, uh, work in progress. <laughs> <laughs> I think I've heard that one multiple times when I asked that question. <laughs> <laughs> I believe it. <laughs> it's, there's always so much to do and so much to add on there. Uh, it's, I, there's a lot of things I'd like to put on. Do you enjoy working on it or is it something you kind of push to the bottom of your list and would rather be outside or, or traveling or doing anything but that? <laughs> um, I wouldn't say I'd rather be doing anything but work on the website. It's more or less I am not a techie person. So me even having a cell phone is pretty good improvement. <laughs> <laughs> so for me to have a website is pretty mind blowing actually. Are you more the, the techie one, Melissa, do you feel like? Um, I, I don't know if knowledgeable wise I'm more techie, but I do spend more time on it. But I'm I still kind of rusty when it comes to all the new technologies they have. And I guess I just don't keep up on all that as much. I feel like you have a really good um, social media presence, though. Like, I know I went and checked it out um, to see what was new before the before we recorded the podcast here. And you do a great job with reels. And, you know, you have a lot of TikToks out there. Um, so I think that's that's great. Do you ever see any do you ever gain any traction um, or locally, you know, maybe make any additional beef sales or anything from the social posts? So far, um, I've had a couple of friends inquire and get some burger, um, but I, I would say I'm still fairly new on the platform, so I don't have much content out there yet, but hope to have a lot more as the weather turns nicer. Yeah, greens up a little bit. That'll help, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I've, I have been noticing some, some more interest mm -hmm. from, from what Melissa does. Um, so did anything specific make you choose Hired Hand for your website? Uh, yes. I had been asking around for years, and then I was told for years that I needed <laughs> to have a website. And uh, uh, basically what, I, what it came down to is how much help that Hired Hand will give you and how easy they make it. For, for you to have a website and, mm -hmm. and work on it. So that was definitely the, the key sales for me. Well, that's what we like to hear. <laughs> uh, 
Um, is there anything else you'd like to share related to internet marketing um, or your website or your social media before we wrap up? Um, Instagram or TikTok, I have one on there for Melissa. That means should that 92 has some fun longhorn videos on there for people to check out. Yeah, the links are now on the bottom of our web page. <laughs> Thanks to the wonderful help we get. <laughs> I think we just yeah, got those added, right? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yep, but yeah, we're uh, we're slowly getting getting more and more uh, in the social media presence and and on the website as we learn along. Well, we'll be sure to link your URL as well as your social handles in the show notes for anyone that wants to go visit. Um, and we'll also include links of a lot of the hired hand customers that you talked about there. So um, I really appreciate you both joining us today. And here's to more warm weather in, in Michigan through spring, right? Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thank you very much. It was joyful. Thank you. Thank you.